science fair experiment. Have your kids do it. <laughs> um, all right. However, there was a little bit of a problem with Arrhenius' theory because it did not account for everything. For example, it did not, did not explain why ammonia actually acts like a base. It can neutralize an acid, but yet you see no hydroxide ions associated with ammonia. So how then could, could that be the definition of a base, something that gives off hydroxide? Because there's no hydroxides to give off. Okay, <clears throat> this required now a modified definition of what these things were. Okay. Um, also, we can actually look and find that hydrogen ions don't actually exist in water. I said that they dissolve and they float around, and that's true for that slide, that, so that we could get to this slide. Um, what actually happens is whenever that hydrogen is given off, a unique ion is formed because what will happen is that free-floating hydrogen will stick to a water molecule, one that's not been part of the reaction. And what will happen is you get something called, you'll have to know the name of this, a hydronium ion. A hydronium ion is a water with an extra hydrogen. So it's H3O. And so because of that extra hydrogen, it has a positive charge. Now, hear me when I say this. From this point on, you can think of hydrogen and hydronium as the same thing. Because when we, we're going to start keeping track of hydrogen and hydronium. We're going to start um, trying to figure out how much of it is there. So whether or not we count the individual hydrogens, or whether or not we decide to count in the form of hydronium, it doesn't matter, because either way, we're still counting that one hydrogen. Okay? So we can, we can mix those two together. It's, it's okay. We can use them synonymously. All right. So there's, there's what you get. All right. Um, just a quick review, because we're going to see a lot of double-headed arrows in these acid-base reactions and that kind of stuff. Uh, remember that if I have reactants that are reacting, I have products that are forming, um, and I have a single arrow that points towards the products, what that tells you is that that reaction goes to completion. All the products react, and you, sorry, all the reactants react, and you will get all the products that you see. If you see something like this, it's a reversible reaction. That means probably most of the products are forming, but some of the products could recombine and come back and form some of the reactants. So it's sort of bouncing back and forth. There's not a complete move from all the reactants over to the products. It's sort of a, a transition, a gradual thing. And just so you know, a uh, double-headed arrow is generally written like that. In these notes, you'll probably see them like this. Either way, it means the same thing. Okay? It's, it's reversible. It can go back in, a, in the other direction. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the Bronsted-Lowry theory. That's, that's where we'll try to wrap it up. But um, In a Bronsted-Lowry acid base, this is a second theory. So Arrhenius said... An acid is something that increases the number of hydrogens present in a solution. And a base is something that increases the number of hydroxides. But like I just said, that's not all-inclusive. We found ways around that that, that, that that can't explain anymore what, what is happening. So we get Bronsted-Lowry's definition. What they say is that if you have an acid-base reaction, what you have is a hydrogen that is transferred from one molecule to another. Okay? It's a little bit different. It's sort of the same, but it's a little bit different than, than the previous theory. Okay? Because this does not have to take place in an aqueous solution. Some things you can react in, in not in aqueous solutions and still get an acid-base reaction. Um, it's a much broader definition than we just looked at. All right. So by this theory, we say that acid is a hydrogen donor, and we say that base is a hydrogen acceptor. We leave out the hydroxide part basically. They're saying that a base is anything that has the ability to absorb or grab a hydrogen. And a hydrogen, sorry, an acid is something that will give off that, that hydrogen. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so if this is an acid, so you've got a, a hydrogen, H something, it could be HCl, H anything. And there's a base, okay, like like, it could be hydroxide, OH negative, something, some kind of base over here. What will happen is that base will grab that hydrogen and then leave that anion by itself or to react with something else. Okay? So it's, it's a matter of actually grabbing and moving a hydrogen. 
all right. Um, amphoteric substances. Uh, some things are acids. Some things are bases. Some things are amphoteric. They swing both ways. Okay. They can act as, a, as an acid or a base, depending on the situation. And what you will see is that the biggest one that we're going to deal with is water. Water has the ability to sometimes be an acid. Very, very, very weak. Okay, you don't sting yourself with water. But it has the ability to donate hydrogens if it wants to. But it also has the ability to take in hydrogens if it wants to at a very, very small level. So it can actually be amphoteric. Okay? Um, HCl is acidic because it transfers a hydrogen to water to form hydronium ions. See, this is different because I said, according to Arrhenius, you drop HCl into, an, into a water, they split apart. And the fact that you've put now free-floating hydrogens in made it an acid. In this case, we're, we bring in the hydronium ion. In this case, we're saying, OK, it's not just about this thing falling apart and putting out hydrogen ions and chloride ions. We're going to look at it more from a chemical equation perspective. We're going to say that this releases that hydrogen. And when it does, that hydrogen locks itself up with a water molecule to form this hydronium. And those hydronium ions are floating around. Okay, just a little bit different of a step. All right, so what happens then? Well, look, did water accept the hydrogen? Yes, it did. So by fact, that this form means that water must have acted by their definition, by Bronsted-Lowry's definition, had to have acted like a base. It took in that hydrogen. Okay. <clears throat> now, if you take a look at ammonia, if you add aqueous ammonia, what will happen is the water, in this case, will actually end up releasing. This will draw towards it, draw a hydrogen away from water. And when it does that, that turns the NH4 positive, which is ammonium. That's an ion. It'll be an aqueous solution now. And what do you leave behind is water, which is hydroxide ions. This is why this can still be a base. This did not release hydroxide ions directly. But indirectly, it caused the production of these hydroxide ions by stripping a hydrogen off of water. Okay? So what did water act as this time, an acid or a base? What did it do? Did it give up a hydrogen, or did it, lose a, or did it, or did it gain a hydrogen? <coughs> it gave up one. See, it went from H2O to OH. And that went from NH3 to NH4. This One of these hydrogens went from here over to here. So if that's the case, anything that loses a hydrogen is an acid. So you see a water acting like an acid here, water acting like a base up here. It's amphoteric. It depends on the situation. All right, we'll stop there.